Are you ready for Matthew? Because Jesus is continuing his ministries. He's, we know that he's heading towards the cross. If you've been here, he's been heading towards the cross, talking about betrayal. And again, of course, betrayal is in today's sermon as well. So uh, we, I think, like I told you last week, we have quite a few more betrayals. All right, so uh, it's, we're in chapter 26, and we're 36 through 46. And let's just, just let me read this to you. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said, <laughs> yeah, he got all tongue-tied, I'm sorry, and said, and of course my wife is laughing at me, and the rest of you are feeling sorry for me. Anyway, said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which is James and John, began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for one hour. Keep watching and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again and a second time prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. And then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up and let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. There's several people in this story, and I would think we would kind of look at the bottom to the top. And the last verse said, the one who's betrayed me is here. And of course, he's talking about Judas, who has led the army the soldiers and the, and the chief priest officers to, to apprehend Jesus. And they came out in mass, and some descriptions say there were over 600 of them to arrest one man because they were afraid of the people that followed him. They were afraid of the way, he, the way people were passionately responding to what he was saying. But there was nobody there but him and his disciples. And where he was, there was only four people, him, Peter, James and John. And so there's Peter, James, and John, and they keep sleeping. And I want to remind you what I just read, because sometimes, you know, you read a verse, you kind of, each one of you heard a highlight. But did you hear the part about his soul grieving to the point of death? Did you, did you hear about him falling on his face before the Father and talking to the Father? And yet three times, it says he did it three times and found them sleeping all three times. And he came back and he explained to them, why are you need to not be sleeping? You need to stay awake for this. This is big times. This is really important. You need to hear this. You need to see what's going on. And you need to you need to comfort me for they could tell he was grieving to the point of death. And in his grieving he prayed. And here we arrive at the Father, his response. Jesus says to him, if this cup could pass me by. Now just in these last couple of weeks, we've talked about cups and what they mean and how many times they use cup to describe something. And Jesus says, if this cup could pass. And what he's saying is, when you read it, if this cup could pass, and they could still be saved, then could we do that? But if it is the only way for Steve to be saved, then so be it. I've been grieved before, but I've never been grieved to the point of death. I doubt that in my grief, to the point of whatever I've reached in grief, I would be very mindful of you. I think my, most of my consideration on that day would be something other than you. 
And yet on this day, Jesus is grieved to the point of death. And what's on his mind is you. I'm not as Jesus-like as I'd want to be. I'm more disciple-like. How many times have I found myself? How many times have you found yourself asleep at the wheel? We're talking about heaven and hell. Now, yesterday we were talking about the trouble in the world and the lawlessness with somebody. And I described my philosophy of uh, not wanting to send anyone. I don't want to kill anyone, no matter what, even if it's my life. And I said something that seems elementary to me, that I wouldn't want to send someone else to hell who was trying to send me to heaven by trying to kill me. The outcome of the conflict would be he would go to hell, and if he won, I would go to heaven. And I can't, I can't balance that. But I was amazed at the reaction, like they'd never thought of that before. Because that's not how we think. We're, we're, when it comes to the subject of heaven and hell, we're asleep at the wheel. We're asleep while he's grieving to the point of death. And of course, you and I don't live at that time. We live at this time where we know he reached the point of death. It says he sweated blood during this ordeal. His grieving was so deep. Today we understand medically how sweating blood happens through great stress. He had blood coming out of his pores, the Bible says. So this day when he's praying this prayer, when he's telling his disciples, would you stay awake with me? Would you watch with me? Would you comfort me during this horrid point? I've been with you three years comforting you in storms, comforting you in hunger, comforting you in violence. When they tried to throw me up, when they tried to seize me, I comforted you by silencing the crowd and we walked right through the crowd. I stayed with you during all these troubles. I came to you in the storms. Could you just stay with me for one hour? And I see me, my way, is to relate. Who am I more like? Am I the disciple who, I'd be awake, Lord, like Peter was last week saying, I'd never deny you. I'd be awake with you, Lord. I'm awake. I'm looking. I'm the one who would stay awake, maybe I'd say. But when I really... Weigh it on out. I, that hasn't been my history, maybe. I maybe haven't been that good at it from the day that I said, yes, I believe that Jesus is Lord. Yes, I believe that his words are truth. Yes, I believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. I have made my proclamation. I have dressed up and gone to church continually for 45 years without breaking. I've never had a season of not belonging to a church. I'd be there for you. I can do, you know, I'll be there. And yet, I have had my struggles, and I have fallen asleep at the wheel, and I have been unaware of the suffering around me, and I have been unaware of what's important to Him. I have made what's important to me the big picture, and what's important to Him the small picture. Does anybody get that? Yeah. I have done that. Have you? I'm, 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 I must say this could be one of my favorite visionary scriptures. Because every time I think of it, without fail, here's what I hear him say. Father, I do not want to be crucified. I do not want to be whipped at the whipping post. I'm now living in human flesh, and I know what it feels like to hurt. And I would really rather not. But if there's no other way to save Steve, this young man Steve is going to be coming along one day and he's going to need salvation because he's got a big heart, but he just keeps falling asleep. And he's going to need me. If you could save him without this, let's do that. But if not... I'll do it for Steve. And that's how I see that verse. When I read it, the first time I read it, I was probably 19. That's how I saw that verse. I've read it hundreds and hundreds of times in 45 years. 
and I always see it the same. He made a choice. Nobody took his life from him. Nobody really came to arrest him. And nobody really betrayed him. He made a choice. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to put you in a position where you're going to fail, but then I'm going to come back and make your failure good. I'm going to put myself in a position to suffer greatly so that I can come back and make things good. I'm going to take your sin. And he's talking about cups. Cups stand for the submission to the Father. Will you drink this cup to John? Will you, the disciples, drink the cup of my sacrifice, my blood? Father, I will drink this cup. Will you drink the cup of submission, the cup of surrender? Jesus, in this story today, says, I'll drink the cup. Because they need to be saved. I'll drink the cup because they can't do it. Not a one of them could die for their sins. I'll do it for them. Will you take the cup of my blood and drink it? And as often as you do it, will you remember me and my cup? Will you remember me and my despair? Will you remember me and my blood seeping through my pores from the great stress of facing this ordeal? Will you drink the cup of submission and surrender to the will of your Father? Will you lay down your sin, lay down your wants, lay down your freedoms? Will you lay down your rights? Will you drink the cup? Will you drink the cup of my new covenant with you? That I'll forgive your sins. I'll do all the work to forgive your sins. Will you follow me? Will you drink the cup of surrender and submission to follow me and obey me? <clears throat> he came to me. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be your Savior. I'll be your Lord. Will you be my disciple? I'll drink the cup. Now, I'm not bringing you peace. There's going to be turmoil. I'm not bringing you easy road. It's a narrow, long, straight, hard road. Will you drink the cup? Peter, you, you're going to be tied up and drug away. Will you drink the cup? Will you take this call? Will you make a new covenant with me? That's really what he's saying. Will you make a new covenant with me? Will you belong to me? I'm under a lot of pressure to demand my rights as an American. Here is a Father's House Church pastor. I said I don't have any rights as an American. I am, I am a citizen of a different kingdom. And that kingdom is one of submission and surrender. Though I am a man of rebellion... He is a man, he is a God of submission and surrender. The greatest submission and the greatest surrender demonstrated to us here in the drinking of the cup. I gave up my rights to be his servant and to drink his cup. <clears throat> so, We come to the Father, responding to the prayer. Remember, we're going from the bottom up? So here we've had Jesus. Now it's the Father who's being prayed to, doing the hard thing, letting His Son, His Word, become flesh, suffer, and drink the cup. My sons, I would be very difficult to let my sons drink that cup for you. I'm so grateful I'm not God, and you're so grateful I'm not God. Be hard for me to let my son suffer for you. But God, God called him a son. Jesus is addressing him as my father. And he asked him, 
Could I avoid a whipping and the cross, a crucifying? And there's total silence. I've heard people criticize him for his allowing Jesus to die on that cross. But this is the moment right here where he's being asked, can we have a mulligan? Can we start over? Can we plan again? Is there a plan B here so that Steve can be saved? And I just want you to consider something about the Father heart of God. The Father's love was to remain silent and let Jesus go to the whipping post. You want a good vision of that whipping post? I think the Passion of the Christ showed the whipping post better than anything I've ever, any, any visual I've ever seen. It was brutal. It was horrible. It went on and on and on. And I could keep saying on for a while. It was hideous. And that's what the cup he was willing to drink, and that's the cup he asked the Father, his Father in heaven, my Father. Can I avoid this whip and post? And the answer of silence was clear. No. You can't. Not if we're going to save Steve. Or you. So everyone in this story, showed great love for us. The disciples fell asleep while he was grieving to the point of death. While he was prostrate, prostrate. I, I don't think I've ever said that word right in my life. Prostrate before the Lord. And with that visual and with that asking, they did not respond. They did not follow him. They did not do what he asked them to do. And I got to tell you, I want to be, and I hope you want to be, a person that responds to Jesus and what he wants. And I'm going to finish right now telling you what he wants exactly. Exactly. No gray area. He wants you to love everyone else the way He has loved you. I have asked 117 Christian leaders, what does Jesus command you to do? 117 in a row said, love each other as we, as we love ourselves. And I have to tell you, that's 117 in a row wrong answers. That is not the command of Christ. The command of Jesus Christ, the cup He's asking you to drink, is to love one another as I have loved you. Today, one of the greatest beginnings of love ever showed to you is in the story today. If He says it, if there's no other way, I will drink this cup. And what Jesus is telling you, look around, think about all the people in your life. Think about even the stinkers. You don't get to decide. That's all he's asking you. Will you drink the cup and love even the least of these, even those who did you harm, even those who slapped your cheek, even those who did you totally wrong? Will you love them the way I loved you? Even if they fell asleep on you, even if they ignored your suffering, even if they ignored your pain, Will you love them the way I loved you? That's the cup, and that's what he expects of you. This is Christianity in a nutshell. Love the one that God sent. His name is Jesus. And love one another as I have loved you. I pray that this truth of these, this story today, of these words, of these questions, of these, my, maybe my transparency, I hope got to your heart. Because Christianity right now is showing the world on a major front that we don't really believe what he said. And I'm, 
I just don't want to be that way. I want the world to see who he really is, what he really does, what he's really wanting. He's not asking us to be religious or stand in our rights. He's asking us to love and submit and surrender. Drink the cup that I shall drink because I'm going to drink the cup that is necessary to save you. Will you drink the cup to be my disciples? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes before the Lord. And I'm asking everyone in the place, close your eyes, please. And let the Holy Spirit surround you and fill you. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Touch, Lord, touch us. Move in us. We need you, Lord. We take the cup and we take the body and we take it broken for us. You did what it took to save us. You did what it took. You drank the cup. Now, Lord, give us the courage to do what it takes to save our world, to communicate with our world in a way that they understand you better. They don't judge you because they know us, but they love you because they know us. They love you because we have loved them. Help us, Lord. Do you feel the need for help in this area? Say, help us, Lord. Help me, Lord. I need you. We need you, Lord. Jesus, the Lamb of God, takes away the sins of the world. He's come that we might have life and life abundantly. He's come to show us the narrow way and to teach us the truth. And He's here with us. The King is here today. Glory to the King. My King Jesus, glory to your name. I love you, Jesus. If you, want to, if, you, if you want to renew your relationship with him, if you've never had one, or you have just failed in your relationship with him, if you've walked away, anything, if you just feel the need to go further up and farther in, would you let him convict you? Would you respond to that conviction by raising your hand and saying, I want to be saved. I want to know Jesus Christ. I want a relationship with him that's better than the one I have. I want a relationship with him in the truth. I want to reject my religion and and begin my relationship. Is that you? Raise your hand to Jesus. you have sins you need forgiven, just raise your hand to Jesus. You're convicted. Just raise your hand. He sees you. Hopefully all eyes are closed and I have no idea what's going on. Raise your hand to Jesus. I want more, Lord. I want you, Lord. I have fallen short of the glory of God. I want to go further up and farther in. Raise your hand to Him. And be saved. Be saved from yourself. Now in your mind, I just want you to picture that cup and I want you to take that cup and decide, are you willing to drink the cup of surrender and submission? Surrender to one another, the humans. Surrender to the Spirit. Surrender to your Father who is in heaven. Wake up from your sleepiness and get busy in compassion, in love, to wake up.
I'm going to ask you to come forward and pray with these pastors that are coming forward. I'm going to say, don't leave until you've made that commitment, until you've made that offering, that covenant with God to drink the cup that he's put before you, to lay down your life for your, for your world. Oh, Lord. Don't go home. Come on, guys. Come up to the prayer people. These pastors are up here to pray with you. And don't leave without praying with them. Don't leave without receiving prayer. Don't leave if you raise your hand. Whatever it is you said you want, come up and say, I want. I want to drink the cup. I want to lay down my life. I want to go further up and farther in. I want to know him better. I want to be saved. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to get serious about my Christianity. I don't want to be someone asleep at the wheel. Let's just pray and close the service. Father, we love you so much and we thank you for loving us. So much that you did not respond to Jesus' plea because you knew that's how we could be saved. And you let this happen so that we could be saved. And I love you with all my heart. My Father in heaven, I love you with all my heart. Jesus, thank you. Protect us against the evil one. Protect us against temptation so that we not fall in a ditch. I pray these things for my, the people here listening, anyone who ever hears this, I pray this for you. Be blessed in Jesus Christ. Walk in his name and drink the cup of salvation, the cup of forgiveness, the cup of his covenant. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today, and we hope to see you again soon.